two Sundays ago, I started refreshing you with John's narration of the passion of Jesus. At kagaya ng aking nabanggit ng time na yun, the passion of Jesus is the record in which our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ accomplished salvation for His people. Ang sinimula natin noon ay yung arrest ni Jesus Christ as recorded for us in John chapter 18 verses 1 to 11. At ngayong hapon ay nais natin bigyan ng pansin yung narration ni John patungkol sa trial ni Jesus Christ. At itong trial na ito ay nangyari before the Jewish authorities as well as the Roman authorities. At each of them have three faces. Itong trial ng ating Panginoon before Jewish authorities have three faces and the trial of Jesus before the Roman authorities also have three faces. Yan po ay makikita natin sa mga susunod na linggo ng ating pag-aaral that we may indeed be refreshed with what Jesus Christ did for us. Hoping na kung tayo ay refresh na refresh sa bagay na ito, our devotion, our love for Christ will also grow. Sa panahon ngayon na napakaraming bagay na pumupuno sa ating puso't isipan ay napakalaga na tayo ay nagsusumikap na manatiling refresh at buhay sa ating puso at isipan ang mga bagay na ito na bagamat tapos na ay may continuing implikasyon sa buhay natin kagaya ng madalas ninyong nababasa pagdating sa sulat ng mga apostol at marami sa kanilang mga tila baga uh, command sa atin they root it in terms of who Jesus Christ is and what Jesus Christ did for us. So kung nagbabasa kayo lalong-lalo na ng mga epistles na address sa church, ay nakikita natin na paulit-ulit na nagiging bahagi ng usapin nila. Bagamat ang usapin ay tungkol sa buhay ng isang iglesia, sa buhay ng isang mananampalataya, yung pong issue na actually ay nangyari doon sa tinatawag na Passion Week or the Passion of Jesus Christ. Kaya nga dapat sariwa sa atin parati ang mga bagay na ito. And this afternoon in our continuing study, we will begin studying the trial of Jesus before the Jewish authorities. At ang ginagamit ko po ay yung narration ni Juan because kagaya ng aking nabanggit na sa inyo, merong ibang reason si Juan in the way he presents it. Kaya't maraming alam kayo dahil sa synoptic gospels na hindi babanggitin ni Juan sapagkat mayroong purposes si Juan in communicating the truth to us. Kaya Nais ko kayong anyayahan sa John chapter 18 and this time ay nais kong basahin yung parte na yon sa ating sariling wika. John chapter 18 beginning verse 12 kaya dinakil at iginapos si Jesus ng mga kawal at ng kanilang kapitan at ng mga punong kawal ng mga Hudyo. Siya'y dinala muna kay Anas sapagkat siya'y biyenan ni Kayafas na pinakapunong pari ng panahong iyon. Si Kayafas ang siyang nagpayo sa mga Hudyo na dapat na 
ang isang tao'y mamatay alang-alang sa bayan. Sumunod si Simon Pedro kay Jesus at gayon din ang isa pang alagad sapagkat ang alagad na iyon ay kilala ng pinakapunong pare. Siya ay pumasok na kasama ni Jesus sa patio ng pinakapunong pare. Samantala si Pedro ay nakatayo sa pintuan sa labas. Kaya ang alagad na kilala ng pinakapunong pare ay lumabas at kinausap ang babaeng tanod sa pinto at ipinasok si Pedro. Sinabi kay Pedro ng babaeng tanod sa pinto, Hindi ba ikaw ay isa sa mga alagad ng taong ito? Sinabi niya, hindi. Ang mga alipin at ang mga pulong kawal ay nagpapaningas ng siga sapagkat maginaw. Sila ay nakatayo roon at nagpapainig. Si Pedro ay kasama nila, dirin nila na nakatayo at nagpapainig. Tinanong ng pinakapunong pare si Jesus tungkol sa kanyang mga alagad at sa kanyang itinuturo. Sinagot siya ni Jesus, Ako'y hayagang nagsalita sa sanlibutan. Ako'y laging nagtuturo sa mga pinaka sinagoga at sa templo na pinagtitipunan ng lahat ng mga hudyo at wala akong sinabi sa lihim. Bakit ako'y Iyong tinatanong, tanungin mo silang nakarinig sa akin kung anong sinabi ko sa kanila. Ang mga ito ang nakakaalam ng mga bagay na sinabi ko. At nang kanyang masabi ito, ay sinampal si Jesus ng isa sa mga punong kawal na nakatayo roon na nagsasabi, ganyan ka bang sumagot sa pinakapunong pare? Sinagot siya ni Jesus, kung ako'y nagsalita ng masama, Patunayan mo ang kasamaan. Subalit kung mabuti, bakit mo ako sinasampal? Pagkatapos ay ipinadala siyang nakagapos si ni Anas kay Kayafas na pinakapunong pari. Nakatayo si Pedro na papainit ng sarili. Sinabi nila sa kanya, hindi ba ikaw ay sarin sa kanyang mga alagad? Kinaila niya ito at sinabi hindi. Tinabi ng isa sa mga alipin na pinakapunong pari na kamag-anak ng tinagpasan ni Pedro ng Tainga. Hindi ba ikaw ang nakita kong kasama niya sa halamanan? Muling nagkaila si Pedro at kaagad tumilao ang isang manok. Hingi natin ang tulong ng Panginoon sa ating pag-aaral. Tulungan mo kami, Panginoon, na magkaroon ng tamang kaunawaan mula sa iyong mga salita sa ngala ni Jesus Amen Kung napupunan ninyo parang putol-putol yung pagkakalahad sa atin Verses 12 to 14 ang karuntong putila ay verse 19 up to 24 Yung verse 15 hanggang verse 18 na kung saan nagkaila patungkol kay Pedro ay nakakabit doon sa verse 25 to 27. Napakahusay po ni Juan at ginamit niya yung isa sa rhetorical technique na sa tingin niya ay magpapalabas doon sa kanyang gustong gawin na makita ng mga magbabasa ng kanyang isinulat. Ang tawag po dito ay intercalation. Yan po ang rhetorical technique na nagsa-sandwich ng isang scene in the middle of a different scene. Na kung saan each scene affects each other, pero kung titignan mo, wala siyang logical or chronological priority. Wala. Either scene may comment on the other by way of comparison or contrast. So yan po yung ginagamit niya dito. And later on, makikita niyo kung bakit ginamit niya ito dahil meron siyang nais na i-highlight 
sa atin patungkol kay Jesus at patungkol kay Pedro. Sabi nga ni Fowler, intercalation is narrative slay of hand. A crafty manipulation of the discourse level that creates the illusion, na nakikreate siya ng illusion, that the two episodes are taking place simultaneously. Ibig sabihin, pag binasa mo yung unang bagay, habang si Jesus ay nakaharap kay kay Anas at dinala siya doon, no? bilang pumasok yung verse 15, si Pedro naman, at the same moment, kinakaila naman si Jesus. Pumapasok naman siya. Pinasok si Jesus, si, Jesus, si Pedro ipinasok noong isa pang disipulo. Napunan niyo? So, ganun po ang nangyayari. It is an illusion that two episodes are taking place simultaneously in an intercalation. Neither episode has begun until both have begun and neither is concluded until both are concluded. So, by means of this intercalation, the, right, the reader is expected to hear the denial of Peter at the very moment that Jesus is placing his reputation on Peter's witness. Pero ito'y teknik lang na ginamit ni Juan at makikita nyo yung busay ni Juan in order to pursue yung kanyang nice is pursue sa pinag-aaralan natin. But for the sake of keeping the narrative continuous, we take together two portions in this chapter which deal with the trial of Jesus before Anas. Ito yung verses 12 to 14 at yung verses 19 to 24. Parang ito yung magkarupto. So ganun po siya itatrato to keep the narrative continuous. At dito ay nabasa natin na nung madakip si Jesus at iginapos, he was taken away from the garden, the garden of Gethsemane. Itong mga soldiers brought him to Anas. Si Anas is the real power behind the high priesthood in Jerusalem. Although sinabi dito, si Caiaphas ang present na high priest. Eh bakit po nagkaganon? Si Anas po had been high priest himself before Caiaphas. Si Caiaphas nga sinabi yun ay kanyang son-in-law. Si Anas supposed to be according to the Mosaic legislation to remain the true high priest assigned by God for the rest of his life. Kasi napapalitan lang ang high priest kung siya namatay. E kung titignan ninyo, 15 years na to na hindi siya. And yet, tinatrato pa rin siya na napakalaga ng mga hudyo. Kasi siya tinanggal lamang ng mga Roman uh, authorities, yung governor po, na nagtanggal sa kanya. At tapos, ginawa nila parang political move doon. Bawat priest will only serve for a year. Kaya ito yung time na maraming parang high priest. But seemingly, the people, the Jewish people, especially the more conservative, have always treated Anas to be their true high priest. Bagamat si Anas po is very notorious sa kanyang behavior. Very influential, one of the most influential high priests that Israel ever had nung time ng ating o nung New Testament times na yon. So, yan po ang isang bagay na dapat nating makita at 
Marami nagsasabi, especially yung Jewish historian ng si Josephus, sinabi niya, the market for selling animals and exchanging money in the temples ay hawak ni Anas. And Jesus had twice overthrown this kung baga saan eh, mga bazaars niya and kicked them out of the temples at the beginning of his ministry mentioned in John chapter 2. Ito ay makikita natin sa Matthew, Mark, and Luke. So, itong confrontation na ito sa main source of income ni Anas was likely the main reason why Anas wanted Jesus arrested and removed. So, mga historians, mga Bible scholars, sinasabi nila klaro na bakit nandiyan si Anas, hindi na siya yung high priest, pero tinatawag pa rin siyang high priest because of his influence. Siya yung real power behind the priesthood in the time of Jesus. Hindi si Caiaphas, na son-in-law niya. At hindi siya binabangga basta-basta ni Caiaphas. No? At siya ay merong unsolved issue kay Jesus dahil si Jesus yung sumira ng kanyang negosyo. Dahil nga, si, na, si Anas ay notorious and ito ay napapatotohanan even by the Jewish Talmud con- that contains the following curse dun sa PES 57a Woe to the family of Anas Woe to the serpent like he says so, Nagpapatotoo din na very subtle at very wicked din itong priest na ito no? dapat concern siya sa priesthood dun sa ano pero Marami siyang ibang concern, especially so, ginagawa niya siya yung promotor ng negosyo doon sa templo. Dalawa yung ating titignan, the question raised by Anas and the response given by Jesus. Yun po yung normal divisions na nakikita natin. In verse 19, the high priest then asked Jesus about his disciples, and his doctrine. So, ito po yung tinatanong, gustong malaman ni Anas. Anas is questioning Jesus about his disciples or who are his followers and his doctrine, secondly, or what it was that he taught. Kasi nga, nakita niya, naging popular si Jesus. Ano kaya tinuturo nito? At maraming sumusunod sa kanya. At gusto niya rin palaman kung gaano kalakas ang puwersa ni talaga ni Jesus. Kung gaano ka influential yung sino-sino yung mga influential people na maaring identify with Jesus. And these are the two of the most important things na kung titignan natin sa ministry ni Jesus. Ang pinakamahalaga sa ministry ni Jesus ay yung kanyang mga followers at yung kanyang mga itinuturo. Yan po yung dalawang pinakamahalaga. So, yan din yung laman nung tanong ni Anas sa kanya. His disciples, his teaching. Either na si Carson sabi niya sa kanyang komentari, that the former question may have dealt with the size of his following and the potential for any possible conspiracy. So primarily political. Other describe Anna's concern in a different way. Sabi ng iba, he really wanted to know how, just how influential Jesus had become and how large a following he had gathered and this was more concern of Anas than the truth of the teachings of Jesus. So yun po yung concern, di malaman bakit nandun yung interest ni Anas. Why is Anas interested? Ano ba talaga yung nagmamotivate sa kanya para alamin ang mga bagay na to? 
But what is one thing that is clear is that itong mga humuli sa kanila at yung mga involved doon are trying to build a, gay, a case against Jesus. Because dadali nila, lahat po ng ganyan, dinadala kay Pilate. So they have to build a case against Jesus. And so basically, they would not be concerned about the theology of his message, but the possibility of a crime like conspiracy, insurrection, or rebellion, or riot that might be caused by Jesus and his disciples. Must concern sila doon because any form of riot ayaw ng mga Roman authorities. At yung mga existing authorities, sila yung mapaparusahan doon. Pag hindi nila na-control. Ang mga nilalagay nilang tao doon ay ganoon. Kaya nga, maging yung mga temple priests, maging itong mga religious leaders, ay pareho din yung concern. Pag nangyari yun, lalo magiging mahigpit sa kanila ang Romans. Hindi na nga nasusunod yung batas nila eh. Yung batas na ng mga Romano. Ngayon, kung magkaroon ng ganyan, mas lalo silang magkakaproblema. So, yun po. Kaya hinahanapan nila, both ah, hinahanapan nila, ng kaso si Jesus, that will be punishable by death especially. Kasi kasama na rin doon yung inggit. Nagiging popular masyado si Jesus at sila ay natatabunan. And then, kinakabahan din sila dahil nga yung claim ni Jesus is very dangerous. Messiah. Ay sa isip nila, political Messiah. Pwede yan mag-insight ng riot, ng rebellion, ng insurrection. And so that kind of interest. Ano yung response na ibinigay ni Jesus doon sa dalawang tanong? So, yun ang gusto ni Juan na makita natin. Kung ikukumpara nyo sa narration ng mga synoptic writers, very selective na selective talaga si John. So, diretso siya doon sa response. In verse 20, Jesus answered him, I spoke openly to the world. I always taught in the synagogues and in the temple where the Jews always meet. And in secret, I have said nothing. Why do you ask me? Ask those who have heard me what I said to them. Indeed, they know what I said. So, ano ba talaga yung isinagot ni Jesus? Mapupunan yun, Jesus never entertained the first question asked of him concerning his follower. Gusto makita ni Juan at ipinapakita niya sa atin that Jesus is very, very concerned and very, very serious of his purpose in this coming, in his coming to this world. And that is to secure the salvation of his people. And so he has to protect them. At dito, kitang-kita, pinapakita ni Juan, na doon tinanong yun sa kanya, hindi yun sinagot ni Jesus. He was protecting whoever are those following him. Because his purpose will be affected. So makikita mo na siya pa rin, gusto makita ni Juan, he is in control because later on, as you read, hindi siya diniin ng mga nagtatanong sa kanya. Teka, teka muna. Sagot mo muna yung ano, ano, unang tanong namin bago yung ikalawa. And John again is showing here that what is taking place, do nagtanong sila, do hinuli na si Jesus, yet, it is Jesus who is in control. Kung ano lang yung gustong ibigay niya, na-informasyon sa kanila, sapat na yun. Kaya nga, wala tayong makikita na pinagalitan nila si Jesus, or pinilit nila, o pinigani nila si Jesus, patungkol doon, sino ba talaga yung mga followers mo? We wanted to know. Sino-sino sila? Gaano karami sila? At nasaan sila? 
it was never raised again in this event because he is protecting the one protecting is no other than the Lord and consistent siya dun sa unang sinabi niya na since interested kayo sa akin eto bibigay ko lahat ng kailangan niyo pero with regard to his disciples ayaw niyang isali ayaw niyang maging bahagi ng usapin and so sinagot niya kagad yung second question by saying that he had taught openly and widely and that there were those who had heard him that were available to testify as a legitimate witnesses of what he had taught of course meron siyang tina- tinuro na hindi very public pero sinabi niya has nothing to do with any form of rebellion ni hindi niya binabanggit na okay may tinuro ko sa mga disciples ko pero iniiwasan niya anything that would incriminate his disciples no Although, alam natin, he had taught his disciples privately. He was assuring Anas that his teachings were not subversive. Diba? Yun ang sinabi niya. In secret, I have said nothing. Where the Jews always meet, and in secret, hindi niya sinabi, when I, I am with my disciples, in secret, I have said nothing. Parang sinasabi niya, wala. No? And then, as those who have heard me, hindi niya sinabing, you, you can ask my disciples if what I'm saying to you is true. No? Tumabok ko naman nyo. No? Protectadong protectado, yung so-called disciples. Sabi niya, as those who have heard me, what I said to them, indeed they know what I said. Diba? Kung hindi siya in control, pwede sabihin, ayaw mo, sagutin mo muna sino tong dem na to? Sino tong mga disip sumusunod sa'yo? Sino tong mga tinuruan mo? But Jesus was in control. Jesus was in the process and continuing process of protecting His disciples. And, kitang-kita natin how He chooses His word carefully. Even in trying to testify of Himself. He even, kaya nga, he even challenged the high priest to ask the people who heard him. No, hindi niya sinabi, you ask my disciples. Eh, mapapahamak yung disciples niya. Jesus, because Jesus knew that Anas was well aware na meron siya kung sino yung mga disipulo niya at, mga, at kung ano yung mga teaching niya. Kaya nga siya hinuli. Alam nila eh. Po ba? Kaya nga nalapit ang panila si Judas eh. You see? Nakausap nila. And we saw here when Jesus said that, one of the officers reacted to his words, interpreting that the way Jesus answered was very disrespectful and dishonoring to Anas, verse 22, And when he had said this thing, one of the officers who stood by struck Jesus with the palm of his hand, saying, Do you answer the high priest like that? Remember, Anas was not the current high priest. But, as I have mentioned to you, Anas is highly respected. Being treated by the many of the Jews as the true I priest sent by God buhay pa siya, hindi pa siya patay walang pwedeng pumalit sa kanya La, kumbaga sa ano lahat ng pumapalit sa kanya, bagamat may titulo sila, mga traitor yun ba't sila pumayag napalitan si Ana samantalang ang Diyos ang naglagay sa kanya and this is the first recorded physical abuse done to our Lord Jesus Christ. And it is followed by the reaction and response of Jesus in verse 23. Jesus answered him, If I have spoken evil, bear witness of the evil. But if well, why do you strike me? 
ko ano yung response doon sa attack na yon yung response ni Jesus was logical rather than emotion emotional or physical and you can just imagine kung hindi naging born again yang sumampal sa kanya how he would face Jesus one day as the judge of all the earth iba patatawag siya ni Jesus to stand before him and he would see na si Jesus na binulyawan niya si Jesus na sinaktan niya will be the final judge of his faith how terrible it is to fall into the hands of the Almighty God. And one day, when Jesus Christ returns, He does not return as the Savior of sinners, but He is the one who will judge them to eternal condemnation. But Jesus pinapakita ni Juan pa rin yung unang nakita natin before his enemies cool na cool kalmadong kalmado si Jesus Jesus testifying to the truthfulness merely of his testimony kaya nga sabi niya kung evil yung sinalakad I bear witness of the evil eh, siguro, okay lang na gawin mo sa akin yan. Eh, hindi naman. Why did you strike me? Kaya nga na-imagine ko eh. Kung tanongin siya uli, no? Doon sa judgment day. Why did you really strike me? <laughs> you can just imagine. Why did you do this to me? At nakita natin, may ganyang sin si Jesus. If you have done this to this, no, you have done this to me. So, pwede rin itanong sa atin yun. One day. All that Jesus wanted is a fair trial. Although, knowing he would not receive from this evil man a fair trial. He was being treated unfairly. Why do you strike me? And our Lord's conduct after the slap shows His glory. Again, His willingness to endure what His Father had sent Him for. So after this, Anna sent him bound to Caiaphas and it would seem that this brought an end to the inquiry or to the question of Anna. Wala silang kumbaga sana mapigat kay Anna ay kay Jesus and so abrupt parang abrupt yung story no? Oop, biglang tapos tapos na Ganun lang, kung nanood ka ng palabas, no? parang ganun lang yung ending. Inislap si Jesus, tapos na. Alam natin, hindi pa tapos. Maraming bagay mangyari sa kanya. Pero doon sa presentation ni Juan, ganun. But I want you to notice something that John inserted clearly in this event. I want you to focus your attention a little bit to a very important statement that John inserted here when in fact he already thought about it in John chapter 11. In John 18.24, di ba parang binanggit uli na dadali siya kay Kayafas. Pero doon sa umpisa po, nabanggit na si Kayafas. Duma- pinadaanan na siya. In John 18.14, sinabi doon, Now it was Kayafas who advised the Jews that it was expedient 
that one man should die for the people. Kung mapupunan nyo, parang ipinapakilala si Ana, binanggit na San Ilo ni Caiaphas, nagbigay, naglagay ng statement si Juan. Parang minsan, i-ignore mo lang. No? Kasi ito na yung mga events na nangyari. Why is it, kung binabasa mo yon? walang anumang paliwanag kay Caiaphas kung, t- kung ikukumpara mo po doon sa istorya ng mga synoptic writers eh pati yung event yung interaction ni Caiaphas kay Jesus meron pero si Juan wala kahit na sa mga susunod wala naman dito Jesus before Caiaphas meron po Jesus before Pilate but not Caiaphas. But in the way he mentioned the name Caiaphas, son-in-law, the present priest during that time, he mentioned something very important. Talaga si na Juan na ilagay yun. Sinabi niya, si Caiaphas, siya yung nag-advised sa mga Hudyo that it was expedient that one man should die for the people. It is like John Asking you and me to think about this. Kailan in advice ni Kayafa sa mga Hudyo? At sino ito yung mga in advice niyang Hudyo na to? At itong advice niya tungkol saan ito? It was expedient that one man should die for the people. So, mapipilitan kang alalahanin yung sinulat na ni Juan sa chapter 11. So, sinasabi niya sa atin, tayo nagbabasa ng passion ni Jesus. Go to chapter 11. Kasi, isa yon sa mahalaga na gusto niyang i-remind tayo. Balikan natin yung dati nang itinuro. In John chapter 11, Verse 45, ito ay may kinalaman doon sa miracle. Anong miracle po? Naalala nyo? Yung patay na buhay. Diba? Then many of the Jews who had come to Mary and had seen the things Jesus did, believed in Him. But some of them went away to the Pharisees and told them the things Jesus did. Verse 47, Then the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered a council and said, What shall we do? For this man's works many signs. If we, if we let him alone like this, everyone will believe in him. And the Romans will come and take away both our place and nation. And one of them, Caiaphas, being high priest that year, said to them, You know nothing at all, nor do you consider that it is expedient for us that one man should die for the people and not that the whole nation should perish. So yun po yung tinutukoy na event na kung saan tumayong bigla si Kayapas at nag-advise siya doon sa Sanhedrin na hindi malaman ang gagawin dahil si Jesus ay naging ang sikat. At yung mga tao, tila baga naniniwala sa kanya, kinakabahan ng Sanhedrin, katulad ng sinabi ko sa inyo, baka magsimula ito ng rayop. Kasi, baka tignan nila si Jesus, siya na yung political messiah na inihintay nila that will free them against the Romans. <coughs> so, nakalala sila. Anong, anong gagawin natin? Parang hindi nila alam yung kanilang gagawin. Delikado itong kalagayan natin. Mapapahamak tayo. Kasi pag dumami yan, at ang tingin nila siya na yung political misaya, malaking kaguluhan yan at lago tayo sa Roman authorities. Tumayo si Kaya Paz. Simple lang yung problema. Eh. Nakita mo yung yabang niya at yung boastfulness. You know nothing at all. Pag tinignan mo sa original language yan, bastos na bastos yan. Binastos niya yung mga official doon. 
punong-puno ng kayabangan sa kanyang isip. Madali lang solusyon dyan, sabi niya. Patayin natin si Jesus. Tapos ang problema. Mas okay yun kesa lahat tayo mapahama. Ang ihina niyo muli. Titapusin natin yung tao na yan. Kasi wala nang gulo, di ba? Kung walang gulo, mapapahamang ba tayo? Hindi. Oh. Ngayon, mag-isip tayo. Kaya sinabi doon, after that, they began to plot how to kill Jesus. Tinanggap nila yung suggestion niya. And John reminds us that this is the Caiaphas, the same man who had told the Sanhedrin that it was expedient that one man should die for the people. At yung context ay yung raising ni Lazarus from the dead. They were very worried. They do not know what to do. And it is in this circumstance that Caiaphas spoke bluntly and boldly those words. What does it mean? So, kung makasano, si Juan gusto, gusto niyang ulitin sa mga nagbabasa ng Passion Week kung anong ibig sabihin nun. Binibigyang halaga. And so for us, who are thinking of that Passion Week in the arrest of Jesus, John wants us to consider that. Dito kita, kita mo yung pagiging pragmatic ni Caiaphas. He knew that sometimes one has to put up with a lesser evil to, pre- to prevent a larger one. Here, the death of one for the sake of the whole. One has to sigh for the sake of the whole. Very pragmatic siya dyan, no? Ang ina-apply niya po, eh yung ethics na lesser evil. Choose the lesser evil. We who are Christians should never accept such an approach. In any eventuality, we choose the best good that still can be done. Trusting God, trusting the Lord Jesus Christ. Even miraculously to do things because He is with us. Hindi yung ang solution mo. Eh, lesser evil. Uh, diba? Maraming ganyan ang ethics. Sa difficult situation, choose the lesser evil. No. You don't choose as a Christian the lesser evil. The lesser evil is never an issue before a committed Christian to Jesus Christ who remains to be sovereign over all. In our situation, limited yung understanding natin. Hindi pinapakita lahat ng Panginoon sa atin ang dapat natin gawin. Anong dapat natin piliin? The best good that is available to us at that moment while trusting Jesus. Hindi yung consider mo lesser evil naman for the best of the many. That's terrible. Never, never adopt that ethics. If you believe in Jesus, if you still hold on that Jesus is sovereign, He is in control of everything. He is reigning in heaven as well as on earth. Then in whatever situation you may find yourself, don't choose the lesser evil. Because it is still evil. We have to choose the best good that we can do. If this is the only best good that we can do, sa isip man natin may mapapahamak doon o maaring sa imagination natin baka ito yung mangyari kung magsabi ako ng totoo. Pwede mong sabihin ng, ang totoo. All of us may be given to say something and some of us may be able to not lie, not say still the truth, but in a manner that magkakaiba tayo. Ito yung sitwasyon. Para yung sitwasyon, papano? Nga sinanong ka. Sabi ng nanay mo, pag pumunta sa bahay natin, yung kapitbahay natin, inahanap ako, sabi mo, wala ako. Ayan, ayan. Go. Wala ka, kay Kristiyano. Maraming tatlo kayong magkakapatid. No. Nag-usap kayo, paano mo sasagot eh kung ikaw? Jack and Poy tayo kung sino magbukas ng pinto. So, how would you answer that? 
choosing the best good. Eh, may hindi mo naman sasabihin eh. Sabi po ng nanay ko, sabihin ko sa inyo, wala siya. <laughs> it might not be the best good. <laughs> But still, it is not the lesser evil. So, kung kayo tanungin ko, what, how would you answer that? Diba? Parang si Jesus, tinatanong siya, Who are your disciples? What do you teach your disciples? So, yun ang ibig nating sabihin sa bagay na ito. But for Caiaphas, ito yung kanyang approach. Caiaphas meant that it was better that Jesus should die than that there should be trouble with the Roman. Kaya nga ang labas, pag nagkamali ka, yung killing Jesus was not evil itself. It was actually, para sa kanila, an act of saving the nation. Kako nyo? Pag nagkamali ka, na ang kaunawaan mo, yung tinuro sa atin, hopefully, maging pasto natin, no? Diba, what is in your thought? Eh, yun ang gagawin mo. O, eh, sa thought nila, they were saving the nation. And so, hindi na ba bagabag ang konsyensya ng mga religious leader to think how to kill Jesus? You see? Wala. Walang bagabag. Because nakapoko sila na ang iniisip nila gumagawa sila ng ikabubuti ng marami. Di ba? Ganyan. Ang ating mga bansa, ganyan ang Amerika, ganyan ang Pilipinas. Patayin natin ang ilang Amerikano, pero mapapatay natin sa katerbang kaaway. Paghuhuin natin yung Twin Towers, maraming mamamatay, 2,000 lang yan. Pero may hinto natin yung terrorism. Because now we can bombard them and no one is going to criticize us, no one is going to stop us. Di ba yung conspiracy theory na lumabas doon sa nangyari na yun? Na sinadya daw ng mga Amerikano yun. That's why yung building ganun yung bagsak. Sinacrifice ng American so that the terrorism would be stopped. Kasi nakita na nila na talagang makakapasok na yung mga bomba sa bansa nila. Until, unless they really destroy them radically. Conspiracy, I'm not saying that's true. Ibig ko lang, ginagamit ko lang yung conspiracy idea na yun. Which can be true at the expense of the few, but at the good of the million. So, parang yung nag-decide na ihulog yung atomic bomb sa Nagasaki and Hiroshima. So many are dying. We better stop this because they are producing a much more lethal bombs. Unahan na natin. We stop this and they would surrender. Ang unang bagsak, hindi. Let's do it again. They will. And finally, Japan surrender. But how many died? How many suffer? Pero ikumpara mo sa mga namamatay na sa world. Ang dami. So, maring ganun din ang maging ethics mo. Kung totoo yung chismis na, bakit ang North Korea daw, nung kasagsaga ng COVID-19, parang wala, wala makita. Sinalanan nila yung border, pag may COVID-19 ka, babarilin ka na lang. Yun daw ang order. Kaya, hindi ko maalat. May COVID-19 yan, kahit suspect, patayin mo na, barilin mo na, living mo na. Marami po mga istorya-istorya. But, that idea, gusto ko lang sabihin sa inyo, hanggang ngayon, ini-entertain niya. The few for the many. No? Di ba? Parang ano yan eh, the voice of the majority 
is the voice of God. No. The revealed word of God is the clear voice of God. It's not the will of the majority. Sa church, hindi naman 4K ang government natin is mga pastor, the will of the pastor is the will of God for the church. No. The will of God for the church is clearly in scripture. And the pastor should make, should be able to show to that congregation that that is the case. Na gusto niyang ipagawa sa congregation. See, hindi mo siya pwedeng baguhin. Kasi pag binago mo ang salita ng Diyos, ito yung magiging kahantungan mo. Hindi na masama yung kanilang iniisip na pagpatay kay Jesus. Kasi nga, in nila yung kaisipan ni Caiaphas. He meant to get rid of Jesus to save the nation. Pero pinagtatawanan siya ng ating Diyos because naging prophetic siya. He had no idea that what he was saying would be true. Yung sinabi niya, totoo. Kaya pa spoke prophetically by the overruling providence of God. Because what he said is the great answer to the greatest question. How can a sinful man be saved? And why did Jesus Christ came into this world? You see? Hindi alam ni Caiaphas, he was speaking prophetically by the overruling providence of God. God can speak through the most unlikely people. Kaya nga dito, nabaloktot yung mga pastor. Kaya mali-mali yung ginagawa nila, and yet, since the, the church is growing in numbers, they said, oh, kung, kung mali kami, kung hindi, hindi natutuwa sa amin ang Diyos, bakit anda, dumadami kami? Kayo. Ganyan pa rin kayo, o konti. Ba't kami yung mayaman? You see? Like, kaya pa, they have become pragmatic. Thinking that simply because growing in numbers, marami kang ministry sa labas, o marami na safe. Eh bakit? Kung talagang easy bilibisim kayo, ba't marami nagiging Christian? Masabihin ko, hindi naman naging Christian kung meron nga mga Christian dyan dahil sa inyo, dahil sa methodology nyo. People became Christians because of the sovereign grace of God. Kaya niyo bang mag-produce ng Kristiyano? Of course. No one can. But God can overrule sinful people because salvation is purely His. And when you stand before Him, you cannot boast before Him. Kaya nga salvation is by grace. Walang sino man sa atin makatatayo doon. No? Sasabihin ko, kahit maloko ako, naging instrumento po ako, Panginoon. The church has been blessed because of me. The true God who blesses God's people is God. It's not even the pastor. It's a wrong idea. No. I stand here to be faithful to God for what He wants me to do. That's my business. Whether you would be blessed or not with what I'm going to say to you, as long as I know I have been very faithful to God and to His revealed word. It matters to me, of course, because I love you, na you obey. But whether you like it or not, whether I will be popular before you or not, is not my business at all. Whether the dami mapupuno lahat ng upuan dito, is not my greatest concern in life. I want to stand before God 
and Jesus Christ and hear him well done thou good and faithful servant eko yung binasa nga natin sino ba yung binasa ni Delio kanina si Jehu Jehu ba yun di ba ano sabi ng Lord sa kanya natutuwa ako na ginawa mo ito di ba at dahil ginawa mo ito itong up to fourth generation ba yun hindi maubos Hindi ano, di ba? Sabi ng Lord, I will bless your generation up to the fourth. Now, is Jehu with Christ? Maring, ano, well done, thou good? Oh, hindi, naabot niya yung the best among the worst. Eh, di ba ninang, ayaw mo nung the best among the worst. <laughs> Eh, gusto ko na lang na I'm the cheapest sinners saved by the grace of God. Kahit na iangat niya na ako kay Paul, okay na sa amin yun. Pero yung, yung, yung yung sinabi kanina narinig ko na the cheapest of the best of the bad group. Oh, biro mo yun. Kayo gusto niyo yun? Award na yun? Oh. Di, hindi ko alam. Inisip ko kanina is that the only reward of jail because he remained serving the God of Jeroboam which is a pure idolatry. Let God be the one to decide on that issue. He kept it from me. I keep silent. He did not reveal to me whether he saved or not. Not like Lot I was not expecting Lot to be saved. But God said, He is. No comment. I'm also saved by grace. He is also saved by the grace of God. About Jehu, I do not know. So you see, sa lahat ng ito, God can speak through the most unlikely people, si Caiaphas. Sometimes He sends His message through a man without the man being aware of it. He can even use the words of bad men. Because here, Kayapas is a bad man. And the very words na pinili at uh, pinagmamalaki pa ni Kayapas ay ginamit ng Panginoon. With this word, there are two things in closing I want you to remember. As early as this, the arrest of Jesus, or even before the arrest of Jesus, because it is chapter 11, Caiaphas prophesied the nature of Jesus' atoning death. Ano yung magiging nature ng death ni Jesus Christ on the cross? It's going to be a vicarious sacrifice. Vicarious signifies that Jesus died in the place of of others. One man for the many. Okay? He gave himself, pag sinabi mong sacrifice, he gave himself in payment for their sins. I like what James Boy said. No, Very simple and yet very precise. It was taking, it was Christ taking their place, dying in their stead, taking upon himself the guilt and punishment of their sins in order that there might be nothing left for them but God's heaven. Oh, sabi ko, Lord, thank you. Talaga nung nabasa ko yung sinabi ni Boy. No? Until there is nothing left in me, not one single sin, but only heaven, only being with Jesus wherever he is. Imagine that. What a great blessing. You see, it's like John saying to us, I want you to remember as early as this, you who read. The what he is prophesying is that the death of this man, still alive at that time, will be vicarious for you. If you believe, 
So that's what happened. And this is the teaching most offensive to many. Diba? And even Christians who do not fully appreciate Christ and what Christ did will treat sin lightly. But in this vicarious death and sacrifice, it tells you it is not possible for God to just allow us free because God is holy and just. And because God is holy and just, my sin and your sins must be dealt with. And we can be grateful to Christ that He was willing to be such. But secondly, the prophecy of Caiaphas shows that Christ's death was a definite atonement. It was definite. The death was definite. Jesus died not just to make salvation possible for all, although we can say that the value of the death of Christ can really save all. Who you know intention? Hindi na kailangan mamatay uli ni Christ. Sapat na yon para sa lahat. But that is not the purpose. It is actually to redeem the people of God. Bakit ko nasabi ito doon sa statement niya? You can see this if you know a little Greek. That statement has a definite article. Nilagyan ng definite article. Di ba? Kung babasahin mo uli, di ba? Yung verse na yon. anong nakikita mo? That one man should die for the people. Sa Greek, meron talagang nilalagay na word para yun ang isipin mo. It is there is a definite people being mentioned. A group of people. Very, very clear. The definite article shows that it was a definite group of people for whom Jesus died. They are the ones Jesus earlier identified as those whom the Father has given to me in John chapter 6. For whom he therefore died and who thus are brought to faith by the regenerating work of the Holy Spirit. The death of Jesus is very far from the imagination of Caiaphas. But for us, we are being reminded by John, this is the Jesus. that stood before the authorities. And later on, yung parang kasabayan niya na kwento, next week, titignan natin, this is Peter standing before religious authorities, powerful men, and look how he responded. Compare it how Jesus responded. How about you? How would you respond when you are placed in that position like Jesus Christ or like Peter? The one who boasted. Kaya nilagay doon, di ba sa reading natin? Yung growing. Anong kinalaman ng growing? It is reminding us that there was already a prophecy beforehand. And that prophecy of Jesus was given to Peter at a time where Peter was boasting his loyalty, his dedication to Jesus Christ. But on that very night, says Jesus, you will deny me. You're going to die for me? It was Jesus who really died for us. Kinakita mo bakit niya ginamit? Yung rhetorical device na yun? It's because 
John wanted us to see clearly who Jesus is. And John wanted us to have a Jesus that is no other than the one he is describing to you. There is no other Jesus. There are many fake Jesus. But John is saying, this is the Jesus. The true one who faced whatever is there to face though he was so affected by it. Yung unang pinag-aralan natin, courageously, and here, very faithfully, for his people. Why does he remain like that? Because his eyes is upon his disciples whom he said also before this that he loved. Jesus Christ is standing before the Father. Confess that. Peter before Christ confessed how he loved Christ, how he is willing to offer his, his himself. Impossible. But there is only but one who was able to do it. You see, the way John wants you and me who will be reading this, what are the things that should enter your mind even during that period? How Jesus Christ ever since that greater thing that caused some droplets of blood to come from His time of prayer before God withstood everything what was in his heart to think the glory of his father in heaven that he may be doing it and his love for the people he came for that was what driving Jesus to stick and to stand won't you love Jesus for what he did. And John wants us to see because John wants us to grow in our love for our Savior. John wanted us to see how Jesus also has committed himself to the people for whom he gave his life. And who are those people? Ikaw yon, ako yon. Sino ba tayo? Sino ka ba? We can only say, I am nothing, Lord, but I thank you. That though I'm not worthy of anything before you, yet you gave me the best. John wants you to see for Christ is. Kaya nga sabi niya dun sa dulo sa John chapter 20, that in knowing Him, you might have still the best, not only Jesus, but everlasting life. Because Jesus is what you're going to have, the Jesus who has everlasting life. And if you have Jesus, this is what you're going to have. Jesus is offering Himself to sinners like you and me. You have to decide for yourself. Is this the Jesus you want? If this is the Jesus you want, then serve Him. Come to Him. Ask Him to be your Lord and Savior. You will never regret it until one day you die and face Him in heaven. Marami pong salamat muli, Panginoon. Sa refreshing words na binigay mo sa amin, truly, it strengthens our weary soul in this world. We thank you for the love that Jesus has for us. For even His willingness, Lord, to pass through all this because He really wanted to deliver us and to save us from your wrath. May it be, Father, that others 
will see the Jesus that is presented by John. That in seeing Jesus, they would come to Him and seek Him in repentance and faith to be their Lord and Savior for the rest of their life. For this we pray in His name. Amen.